Hi, so welcome back to Shema Fitness. Today I'm going to be showing you how to mobilize, aka foam roll, depending on what you call it. But it's, and, uh, in this workout, I'm going to be showing you me doing deadlifts, me doing squats. Um, but particularly, the main focus of it is going to be showing you how I foam roll. Myofascial release is absolutely important in terms of your performance. I've seen it help me before, and I suggest you add it into your routine. So without going further ado, me rambling on, I'm going to show you how my workout went and how I first mobilized and I'll explain everything. All right, here we go. One, two. What you may here do is roll out my back uh, because I was going to be doing deadlifts uh, in this workout. I wanted to make sure that I roll out my upper back because that's the area near your traps that's going to be uh, needing a lot of my fascial release. So here I'm setting myself up and just rolling back and forth crossing my arms so that my back rounds out a little more and then I can get a little more tension and pressure in the area that I need to roll out. And then I turn over to the side and I start rolling out my lats uh, because I'm going to need my lats while I'm doing deadlifts. Um, so this is one of the ways uh, to roll it out. And uh, I just switch back and forth from side to side and uh, that's how I take care of my upper back. Me using the softball and I put it um, near like around the piriformis which is really your glute area and I just keep rolling back and forth because I squat and deadlift sometimes like this area gets really tight as you can tell I'm really making a grimace face as I'm doing this um, but basically you want to find the area of pain and then just keep rotating in that area in the same way that I'm doing in this video just going back and forth and just hold it breathe yeah exactly that hurt <laughs> that hurt a lot but uh just keep going back and forth and i'm pointing out the sartorius which is the longest muscle in your body and it goes across the knee joint and it works with your hip flexors and uh, it helps with uh, adducting and so sometimes like if you're doing like a lot of squats stuff like that that's like one area that uh, might get tight for me it always gets tight so i always use a softball and i roll back and forth on it I mean, uh, I like a softball because I can really get deep in there and uh, you need something sturdy, something like something really solid uh, to get through. And then here when I'm moving my foot back and forth is uh, to really get that muscle um, to contract. So just the deflection and adduction back and forth. But without going too much science, really what I use this for is just to get certain areas can tell it was like really hard for me to get it so what I decided to start doing is I'm going to use a tiger tail. Tiger tail you can find them in most gyms and uh, it's basically the stick that I'm showing you right here and uh, that will get everything that you need and so just start pressing just rolling back and forth back and forth extend the leg out. The reason why I work on my tibialis anterior is because it's part of ankle mobility. If you have good ankle mobility, you're protecting your knee and uh, it's really just critical, especially doing squats and stuff because a lot of times people complain about uh, their knees hurting when they do squats. Uh, sometimes it's uh, too much uh, quad activation and not enough hamstring and then sometimes also like they just don't work on their calves like what I'm rolling out here. So Rolling out the calves and the tibialis posterior uh, helps with ankle mobility just because it increases your range of motion. That's just the simplest way to explain it. And then here I switch off and I use the tiger tail to get my hamstring. Um, usually I would probably just stretch, but this is another way if you have a really tight hamstring to get in there and just release that and get myofascial release in there. All right. Now on to the next stuff. Here I'm showing when you have a soft foam roller and it doesn't necessarily uh, get the release that you want. That's when you can use a PVC pipe, very sturdy, you can see. So I'm going to use that on my back. And again, the same thing that I did at the beginning, rolling back and forth. And because it's a much harder surface, it's going to have more of a release. And so. I like to use this if, um, especially because the other <laughs> foam rollers like don't um, don't work that well uh, for me. So basically, I roll back and forth, and then eventually, I uh, used. I like to use this particularly like when I'm doing uh, uh, stuff for my quads. As I'm showing here, I'm going to show like real quick. I roll out my quads. I work out, and PVC 
5 is usually my favorite. The harder the object, the more the better fi my fascial release you'll get. Obviously, if you're not experienced in this, you want to start softer, and as you get more experience, you'll start to use uh, much more sturdier ones. All right, here we go. Time for the warm up. Uh, a lot of times, I'll just start one at 225, just go straight into it. Deadlifts, I can actually like lift uh, much more than this. So. When my warm-up starts, usually you just get about good three or five. The central nervous system start going, all right? So notice my hips are staying high. Gotta make sure that when you're doing your deadlifts, your hips stay high. You're pushing through your heels, not your toes. And you wanna keep the bar as close to you. So here, it's like I'm jumping in the higher and higher weights. I eventually get to uh, 405 and I decide to use uh, wrist wraps. Uh, why I use wrist wraps is because I was doing a conventional deadlift uh, grip overhand and uh, this is the result. Woo, that's some shakes. And woo, another one. It's going for five. Keep out here. My hips are starting to get lower, so I'm struggling a little more. You know, the shaking is normal, it's fine as long as the bar path, the bar is close to the body, that's the most important thing. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> yep. so, that was a good run. The deadlifting session, I've decided to do 325 here. Going for 10 is basically what is going to be my cardio. I'm staying consistent, it's not bad. Uh, I switched back over to false grip <clears throat> on this last one because uh, false grip I just lock out more. I just kind of need to stay away from it more because uh, I've been having some bicep tendon issues, but. Um, conventional deadlift grip is good too. I just prefer to do uh, false grip just because I have more control over the bar, I feel. Now this next is just me doing my squats. Usual stuff. A little bit of a butt wink there. <clears throat> That's how you can tell my glutes were just tired. I mean, as you can tell in the deadlift, I was really struggling. So if you're starting to see like a butt wink, as long as it's not too bad so the butt wink is uh, at the end where you see me my my butt dip underneath when I get to the bottom so, um, so basically I just kept going and I got to oh wait <laughs> I was gonna have the wrong weight there <laughs> I always gotta make sure you check that because if you don't yeah, <laughs> bad stuff could happen all right here we go Fifty-five after getting the weight right. Um, so that does. Yeah, so just going for a quick shot one. Difficult, and then the final burnout one. I decided to go for eight to twenty-five just to finish it all out. And, uh, that was it for my squats. Alright, and to finish out the workout, decided to do some weighted pull-ups. Wide grip. Uh, of course, I have to take the shirt off. But I love these just because these help with the wide back, building that, getting that lat activation. So if you're doing a bunch of these, you're gonna start getting lats like these. Check me out. Yeah, yeah. All right. Then the next thing I did, decided to do some dips. Um, here, my issue is that I was not pinning my shoulders back. You gotta pin your shoulders back. Um, luckily, I always have uh, friends around that uh, tell me to fix that. So I try to push my shoulder blades back so that they're pinning together, as you can see here. Then you get much more of a chest activation. 
because otherwise what I was doing is I was really just working my triceps. So hopefully you enjoyed that workout and you liked the way that uh, I was able to actually push through on that deadlift. Uh, it was a little bit difficult. As you can tell, my glutes were not firing quite properly. And I was pushing through the heels and it had been a while since I had actually worked on anything like that. Um, uh, well, it had been a while since I had actually used that type of grip. Cause, um, so like the, to explain the real thing that happened. So, it's like, so when you're doing a false grip, that's when, you know, like grabbing the bar grabbing it like this. Conventional deadlift, you're usually grabbing the bar like this. This is just like upside down. So let's just say I'm grabbing it like this, right? So when you're using a false grip, I'll stand. When you're using a false, a false grip, you're like this. When you're using a conventional grip, you're like this. And so that's why I had to use the straps. I like false grip just because I'm able to lift more uh, because it allows me to lock out better. The issue that I've been suffering from lately is that my bicep, my bicep tendon was starting to really get strained from all the false grip that I've been doing. So I decided this time to just uh, do a conventional deadlift grip. <laughs> Except the only issue is I had not done that in two years. So uh, it was like a whole different thing. So when it came to that deadlift, you saw me struggle uh, with it. And uh, yeah, it was, man, like everything was, ooh, it was a hard push through. So <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing the stanky leg, I was doing the, the the Harlem shake, if you want to call it that. So I was I was just all over the place. To be serious, the um, you want to be careful, maintain your form while you're doing the deadlift. Um, now to go back to the reason why I was talking about foam rolling um, before. Now, if I did not foam roll, my workout would have been even harder than it seemed. Um, cap. Foam rolling is very important because it increases your range of motion. Uh, it could help also uh, increase your uh, mobility and it's uh, good also for recovery. Um, I tend to do foam rolling to increase my performance in the gym so that I'm not tight when I go work out. But on days that I'm not working out, if I'm still feeling sore, I like to foam roll because it helps me uh, recover. Uh, one bad habit that I picked up uh, when I was younger uh, working out is I used to just go in the gym, no warming up, just go straight to it. I would just get on squats and I would just put 225 there because I was, I was like, oh, I made it. My ego, <laughs> my ego was saying you, you can do anything. Um, I'm getting close to, uh, I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit older. So now I need a little more time before I just jump into things. So uh, that's why I suggest that you always in include uh, foam rolling into your routine before you work out. So the combination of foam rolling and massage rolling was able to increase the knee range of motion, the ankle range of motion, the hip range of motion, uh, hip extension wise. And so that it was very important, especially for lifts. Like you saw in my lift, I was working on deadlifts and squats. So that's very important for me to have that type of range of motion, especially for the knee, ankle and hip. Another reason why people use foam rollers is because they want they want to use it after a really difficult exercise because they want to make sure that they take care of DOMS. If you don't know what DOMS is, it's delayed onset muscle soreness. So that's when you feel sore after a workout or as some people say, that feeling you get after leg day. <laughs> but you know, we'll talk about that another day. Uh, this study found that uh, it doesn't affect it doesn't enhance or negatively affect your performance, but what it does is a perceived notion of fatigue. It reduces the perceived notion of fatigue. If you're having a reduced uh, notion of fatigue, then in terms of your central nervous system, in terms of like actually pushing it and going for a higher weight during your workouts, that's gonna uh, effectively help you. So that's why I actually feel that foam rolling is very important because if you don't feel fatigued while you're working out, then you're able to push for more and more and then you're able to uh, progressively overload during your workout. And you know, that's how you win. But you wanna do it very carefully. So in conclusion, you saw the importance of foam rolling. It helps with mobility. It helps reduce pain from uh, delayed, on, <clears throat> delayed onset muscle soreness. And then also it helps with your fatigue in terms of like your actual performance in the gym. Uh, now, as you saw, <laughs> as you saw, I still, uh, I did the Harlem Shake on my deadlift. Hopefully I won't do it next time. But um, it was uh, very important for me to get that workout in. Um, if you like the video, please give it a like subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Uh, leave comments in the section below so that I can know what you feel 
um, about this type of stuff if you found it helpful. And uh, if you feel like you need a little more help uh, explaining uh, me explaining some of these things, shoot me an email. I'm going to uh, put my email right there. I'm a personal trainer and I do offer services where I'm able to help you in terms of your bulking, cutting, uh, maintenance, or just athletic performance overall as a whole. And then also I'll put in the description my uh, social media uh, screen names. Uh, especially, uh, you can reach me on Instagram and you can also reach me on Twitter. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So thanks for checking me out uh, here at Cyrus Ashema Fitness where we try to keep things simple. All right, I'll catch you next time. Peace.